All right, so I've got the Simplicity um, manual. I pulled up the 2001. I don't even know what year the machine is, but let's say it's a 2001. So this is the cranking circuit section. So the way they did this, I kind of like the way they did this. They show you the whole everything, and then depending on what circuit you're really look, looking for, they will highlight and bold the um, wires that have to do with that function. So everything in black here, bold, are the wires that affect the wires and connectors and switches that affect cranking. So that's pretty cool. So basically, we can start at either end here. Let's start at the starter. So right here, right here, I was measuring, or I guess here, technically on the, on the solenoid plug itself, I was measuring 6 volts, 6.5 volts while cranking when it didn't actually crank or when trying to crank okay so there's a voltage drop there so where does that how does that wire get fed it gets fed from pin one from the engine plug where does that go well if you come over here pin one for the engine plugs remember i broke this apart and cleaned it so i don't think that's the issue so pin one gets fed um by the output of the pedal switch which i did disconnect and clean these pins as well doesn't mean the switch is good but the pins should be good. So that goes through there. So when you press the pedal down, it makes this connection and allows it to crank. Uh, it even shows you this is the pedal up configuration, which means this is no connection. Uh, oh, it's open. So when you push the pedal down, this connects and, and shorts. Therefore, it allows the cranking to happen. So how does that get fed? That traces up here to this 10-pin connector here to pin 9. Where does that go? Well, that actually goes to the rear harness to pin 9 here. And it goes to the cruise switch, which I guess when the cruise is enabled, the, the cruise uh, lever there, um, it breaks this connection, I'm guessing. So it goes through there and comes back out as pin 8. Okay. So that's something else to test. I did not test that. So pin eight comes out here and it goes up here, um, up and around to the rear PTO switch. I do not have a rear PTO, so I just don't have this. I'm guessing that in my case, that goes straight to the um, front PTO switch, which I did. I pulled this plug, six pin plug here and cleaned the pins on both sides. Um, anyway, so it goes to the PTO switch where does that get its power from? Directly from the ignition switch. All right. So here's the ignition switch. Pin S is cranking power. And that's what provides power to the starter solenoid. And that gets its power from that. Let's see. When you're in start, it bridges B, L, and S. So B, L, and S. B goes through the circuit breaker into the battery. Again, I cleaned both sides of the circuit breaker plug. That didn't fix it. And then L, what does L do? L is red, blue, which goes up to this junction and battery light. Okay. Well, I don't think I care about that in this case. So, so tracing it back the other way, if you start at the battery, you go to the circuit breaker, which I've located in the video. It goes to pin B, the battery, on the ignition switch that's always hot when you turn the key to start or crank it connects to pin s so it puts that battery power on pin s which then goes out to the front pto switch which then goes through the rear pto switch if you have one i don't it's it then goes down and around to the pin 8 of this 10 pin harness here which goes through the cruise switch, which needs to be closed or disabled for that to work, comes out on pin nine. It goes out of pin nine through the brake pedal switch, which needs to be pushed down to crank. It then goes to the engine plug pin one. And the other end of pin one goes directly to the starter. So that is all of the things that have to happen. Power has to flow from the battery through all of that stuff to crank the engine over. 
So my job is to go back out there at some point and test some of these other things that I didn't notice before. Um, I don't know what my plan is. I don't know if I'm going to start at the ignition switch, perhaps, where the battery feed is. And I could even just te uh, check it at the breaker. That might be the easiest because the uh, stud was exposed. I could put my test light right on the breaker. But uh, if that was a problem, that would indicate or implicate um, this connection here, which would be easy to fix. I bet you that's not my problem, though. But I can certainly start there and check it and work my way back. You know, I could I could look at the ignition switch so I could get a test light on the S pin, um, the output of the ignition switch. If that has a voltage sag, then I know the power in the ignition switch is not being passed properly between pin S and pin B. So I would need an ignition switch. If that didn't dim or have six volt drop, I could check it on either end of the front PTO switch and so on while while trying to crank. And if I can find my voltage drop, I found my problem. So that's basically how this works.